guys, in case you're new to this channel, my name is Hamad Benesha. I'm the founder of undoit.ca. In this channel, I talk about MacBooks, MacBooks repairs, everything to do with MacBooks. I'm located in Toronto, Canada, downtown next to the Sin Tower. And I have been in the business for over 20 years. I'm also an Apple certified technician and I only fix MacBooks, nothing else. So if you haven't done it yet, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Well, hi guys, tout d'abord, un petit bonjour, un petit coucou, comme d'habitude, à nos amis francophones du Québec. Uh, today we're gonna um, fix a MacBook Air model A1466. Uh, this machine has no power. It doesn't turn on. Okay, I mean it has power, but it doesn't turn on. Uh, this MacBook came all the way from Vancouver, uh, from a computer store, and uh, we're gonna try to help help them out and fix it for them. So let's take a look at it. Let's open it and see what's happening. Okay, so this machine came without a hard drive, without the SSD. Okay, they don't ship them. Uh, usually, computers don't, don't don't send them with a you know with a, for a privacy, and they want to keep the data of the client private. And also, the battery is already unplugged. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it in, plug into the power. And let's see. As, you, as uh, I don't know if you noticed, but um, the fan was starting to to load here. It's trying to load and it doesn't power up. The machine doesn't power up. So I know that because they sent a note uh, with um, what's wrong with it. They said that the um, intermittent power, the fan wants to, to turn on, but the, the MacBook will not go all the way. So I knew that already just by reading their notes. Um, okay, now based on my uh, years of experience, okay, usually when there is an issue like that, it's because there is. Um, Normally, there is a problem with um, the BIOS area. Either the BIOS chip is uh, is bad, or there is liquid damage in that area, or the EFI is corrupted. That would usually, usually ca cause this issue. Um, to f to uh, troubleshoot this problem, usually it's, it's fairly hard, especially if there is no liquid damage. Like in this case, we can look. Uh, we can look. And I don't see any liquid damage on this side. It doesn't mean there is none on the other side, but it's pretty clear on this side, okay? So I'm gonna put the multimeter here so you can see the numbers. And I'm gonna put the over here beside the CPU. And as you can see, the numbers goes up and down on the, on the multimeter, you see, and 1.6, okay? And then it shuts off. And then up, it turns on again, 1.7, and then it shuts off. Okay, so having said all that, it's, it's kind of a good news because I know that all the powers are here, you know, for the machine to, to work. Um, because usually the last one that will turn on will be the CPU and the CPU power is there. It's just, you know, it, it just doesn't stay on. Okay, so let's remove the, the board. Let's see what they've done and see what they missed and see how, how we can fix it. So I'm gonna remove the power. Remove the out cable, remove the battery. The good thing is that they already removed most of the screws. Okay. They remove the fan. Okay, so the board is out. Now the first thing I do usually it's a visual inspection. Inspection. So as I su su suspected, they already tried to to uh, replace the BIOS and redo the EFI. Okay, so I can see there is a, you can see, you can see there's some flags over here. So I will uh, probably try that first and then uh, see what happened. And um, if that doesn't fix the problem, well, then you know there, there's another issue. So let me um, remove the FI, and uh, I'm gonna put a new one uh, with a with a you know 
and most updated uh, uh, firmware on it and uh, see see what happened. And then if that doesn't happen, then well, we have to look somewhere else. Uh, but usually that's th that's the issue. Okay, so let's try that. Just gonna remove it. Okay. Make sure nothing can. You have to always double check the components beside it. Okay, so the, the alpha is off. Um, I'm gonna get another one. That one right here. Okay, I got another one. I'm gonna program it. Okay, so I can turn this off for now. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna program the. Um, the EFI, okay, I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, I have to cover it so it doesn't short. Put it over here and then I'm gonna program it. It takes about 20 minutes. When we come back, we're gonna put it back and see if that solved the issue, okay? Um, I'll be right back. Oh, hi guys, okay, I'm back now. Uh, I have the new EFI, the BIOS, uh, you know, reprogrammed with the new firmware. So we're gonna try that, so I'm gonna remove it. There you go, very fast. Mm. Remove the excess of um, solder in there, otherwise we're gonna have a short. Yeah, we're good. I'm sorry. There you go. Okay. Let's put some clocks, clean properly, make sure there's no issues. Over here, okay. Now let's try that again. A little. Okay, and then we'll try it again. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this for a test, just a tester. There's the camera, so you guys can see. Let's see if we still have the same problem, which most likely we will. 
because I already tried it, but I just want to make sure because I already tried the, the BIOS. So I just want to be 100% sure. There you go. The fan start to move a little bit. There you go, see? So exact same problem. So that's not the issue. So I'm gonna measure again here so you can see. There you go. So the CPU is about to turn on, but then it shuts off. So there is another problem. So I inspected the, the board earlier, like very carefully, and there was no liquid damage in almost anywhere, okay? Except for one tiny, tiny spot, but that was uh, totally unrelated. So what ended up happening, because I know it's not the BIOS, and those are the most difficult uh, board to, to, to troubleshoot when there is no short circuit, when there is a short circuit, it's fairly easy. Okay, you you um, you, you measure uh, the inductors because every every circuit has an inductor. So you find a short, and then you you go based on the um, which one it is. None of those inductors has a short on it, so there is no short circuit on the board, and there is no liquid damage. Okay, so that's it. Gets, it gets a bit uh, complicated. Okay, because it's usually a firmware issue, or or it could be a, a small tiny. Uh, spot that's almost impossible to 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 to, to, to see okay um so because i've had a similar problem like this in the past where you know so what i, I had to go back to my um to my notes because i, I make notes on on every um on every um uh, repair that i do especially if they are if i spend over you know four hours on it uh, I, I, I put notes i make notes myself because um, eventually they, they come handy, which they are today. So, because I have a similar problem in the past, I knew exactly where to, to start looking. I know there is a problem um, near the CPU, in this case, no longer the BIOS, and I uh, actually uh, f figured out what the problem is, okay? The problem is in this area, PU, okay? So, I looked uh, very carefully under the microscope, and, um, I uh, saw so there is a broken trace actually between two components. One, uh, the, the capacitor that is burned, okay? Uh, so that removed it, but there was also a, a very critical uh, short, uh, sorry, uh, broken trace. Um, so what I gotta do now is just gonna jump a wire to, to reconnect the broken trace, and then we'll uh, try it again. So I need, the, uh, for that, I need the, the, um, the microscope because it's so tiny. I don't know if you can see, you can still see, let me see. Yeah, you should be able to see. So, I'm just gonna jump the wire. Oh. Okay. okay, so now I jump the wire. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try it again. Okay, let's see what happened. Can you see it all? Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna put the speaker. I don't know if there is sound or not, but just in case, if it turns on. There you go. It's turning on. This is model A20, 3437. Okay, the, this motherboard. The first time the machine turns on, it, it turns on three times. It, it goes one and then it shuts up. Yeah, you heard the chime? So the, 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 the machine is on, the MacBook is on. The uh, problem fixed. There you go. The CPU is getting 1.8 volt. Okay. So like I was saying, the, um, let me do it again. On this model, 820-3437, when you power it up the first time, the fan goes on. It shuts off, it goes on the second time, it shuts off, and then the third time it should chime. Okay, so let's try it one more time and see if we can hear the chime again. So it will shut down, not right away obviously, like the, uh, before. It will turn on again, two, it will shut down. The third time you hear the chime. 
There you go. This mic box is not fixed. So all I gotta do now is just reassemble the, um, put back the, the logic board. I'm gonna um, test the, um, make sure everything is good. I should do it right now. Make sure there is a backlight, make sure the, the battery charges, uh, make sure, you know, make sure that everything is good. The keyboard is working, the trapper is working, and then send it back to Vancouver. So if you have a if you have a MacBook and if you are located anywhere in Canada, okay, most of the most of the shipping is free, okay. And you can see all the details on our website undoit.ca. So you can cut, cut the middle middleman, and you can send it directly to us. <laughs> Probably cheaper. So let's put it back quickly, and then we'll try it. So. Can you see me there? There you go. A little bit better. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to put it back quickly. So, uh, when uh, if you're in the repair business or it's, it's important if you have a, a problem that was difficult to fix to, to take notes that's my suggestion because sometimes it might come back years later and you, you could have a similar problem like today and those problems like I said they are really difficult to figure out especially if they're an intermittent problem but uh, and it's also almost impossible to remember every, every repair because uh, some people think you know, oh, you know, it's always you have liquid here. This is the same problem. No, it's not always the same problem because there's so many components. You you remove one, and you end up with a different issue. So it can it can be very difficult. It's a bit easy to uh, a bit easier to narrow it down, but to really figure out the problem, sometimes it it, it, take, it can take time. And um, time is uh, obviously is important because for those repairs to be valuable uh, you, you need to to be able to you know to fix them fast enough so here you go plug it in i'm gonna put the cable back here you go well the cable well, screws they sent not that many screws mm. Okay, well, let's put this one for now. Okay, I'm gonna plug in the battery. Okay. Plug in the Wi Fi so we can test everything quickly. Make sure it's all good. Okay, so like I said, they didn't send a hard drive, so I'm going to put our hard drive on my hard drive. There we go. going to plug in the battery. Okay, we're going to turn it on by battery. That way we know the power button works. There you go, it turns on. So that's good news. The power button on the keyboard works. The battery works. Doesn't mean it charges, but we know at least it works. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over like this. I'm gonna press the option button. Why? Bec because it's not the hard drive that belongs to that logic board. It will take longer to de to to detect it. That way, I can I can go move a little bit faster. There you go. So it turns on. That's good news. Now, if the if the BIOS is good. If the F5 is good, the machine will will, will work, you know, as, as intended. Sometimes if the F5 was not reprogrammed properly, so remember that, the 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 bar will load, but it will hang, it will, it will freeze. So uh, because we replaced the F5 and um, reprogrammed it, okay, so I just want to make sure that's... Um, so the F5 is good, 
we can tell the BIOS is good. Okay, the what we can test now is the Wi-Fi. It's good. Okay, the Wi-Fi is good. We can test the keyboard. The trackpad is working, no problem. We're gonna test the keyboard. Delete. So. Yeah, all the keys are working. Capital, capital, caps on, caps off. So all the keys are working, perfect. Now we can test the, the camera. Yep, okay, just make sure the microphone is good. Testing, testing, this is just a test. Turn it off. Yeah, it's working. Everything is good. So this uh, MacBook is fixed, 100%. Uh, it can be sent back to Vancouver. Again, if you have a MacBook, if you're located anywhere in Canada, okay, whether it's liquid damage or you dropped it, whatever, whatever, as long as it's a MacBook, okay, just visit us at andu.ca, and also keep watching uh, our videos because I'm gonna keep on posting videos about uh, different repairs, different models, different years. Uh, look forward to. Hearing from you if you have any questions, service at undoit.ca or call us or visit us online on the, on, on the website. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. The process is very easy whether you're located in Toronto or anywhere in Canada, just visit undoit.ca. Click here to get a quote, or you can also click on the menu here, get a free quote, it's the same link. There is nine different categories, so try to select the one that best applies to you. In this example, I'm just going to click on my screen is black. And uh, let's assume my screen goes black when I tilt it. So I can, you can either get a free quote online or you can also call if you prefer. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to click on get a free quote. Fill up the form and just click on submit form. When you click on submit form, this is what I receive on my end. And as you can see, we do receive a lot of requests. Uh, actually, 90% of our business is uh, shipped to us now from all over Canada. So you can rest assured that we know what we're doing. Uh, so I read it, I analyze it, and then I send an email with a quote uh, with all the option to the client. And if you decide to ship it, you just click uh, here to select your shipping option, and then you'll receive a shipping label. As soon as your MacBook is fixed, you will receive an email with pictures showing your MacBook repaired, your invoice, and how to proceed with the payment by credit card. As soon as the payment is made, we'll send it back to you. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to receiving your MacBook. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video.